Welcome back. I'm happy to have our next guest here uh, is uh, Lois Kraft, the pastoral minister's manager. Good morning. And uh, good morning to you. <laughs> you look so colorful today. Well, I like your colors too. Uh, there we are. <laughs> um, but it's nice to have you here. I prefaced our thing today by saying we were nurturing both uh, uh, physically and spiritually absolutely. today. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. We love them both. And you get the spiritual part. Get the spiritual part. <laughs> How I are love things? the physical part too. <laughs> <laughs> How are things going? Uh, things are going very well uh, in pastoral ministries. Um, I continue to just be pleased with the, not only the people that we work with, but certainly the residents that we serve and also, you know, just having the opportunity to work with staff um, in many departments. So um, to sure. see what we can do to support this entire community. So it's always wonderful. Things, things are really good in pastoral ministries. That's great. Do you have any updates for us and uh, sort of teasers for things that are going to happen? Uh, we do. We do. Um, the, some information that will be um, available in Cubby Stuffers for, um, for residents for this month. Uh, tomorrow is going to be a, a really big event. Um, it's an event that was done, I think, about two and a half years ago uh, through the um, the Village Church and, at the time, Columbia at Greenspring mm -hmm. uh, through uh, Pastor Jim Bell and Reverend Kathy Allen. Uh, but mm -hmm. the Interfaith Council and Pastoral Ministries are working um, to hold an event tomorrow separation of church and state. Mm -hmm. um, certainly there are a lot of issues that are going on in our country uh, and we felt that uh, this event would be one that, that uh, is timely mm -hmm. um, in terms of all the discussion um, that has been going on. So um, the information has been posted uh, throughout right. the community, uh, but separation of church and state. Um, our guest speakers are uh, Brent Walker, J. Brent Walker and Rabbi Jonah Pessner. Um, and we look forward forward to some, some really good discussion, um, certainly the expertise that they will be bringing to this community. And we're also uh, grateful to um, Reverend Jim Bell for his connections in helping to get them here. So mm -hmm. uh, on behalf of the Interfaith Council and Pastoral Ministries, we invite everyone to come out to this event. It's tomorrow, August 2nd at 1.30 p.m. in the Village uh, Square Theater. So, um, and then I know that some, um, uh, the Baptist Joint Committee, um, one of the organizations has also done uh, a press release and has sent the information out to people who are in this area. Mm -hmm. um, so we pro will probably have some outside uh, guests who will want to attend. Okay. So we expect a really, really good discussion, um, uh, allowing time for all also Q&A uh, at the end of the session. So okay. please join us. Uh, and on how tomorrow. long will this session last? It will last for an hour and a half. So okay. we're going from so 1 1.30 30 to 3, to 3 o'clock in the Village Square Theater mm -hmm. um, tomorrow, separation of church and state. Okay. Um, and then uh, we have been doing, um, in response to um, some uh, feedback that we received from residents. We started this last November, uh, did a couple sessions, and then have come into beginning in April. We're doing monthly faith, grief, and loss uh, sessions, um, the majority of which are in the chapel. Um, you know, I know that there are other sessions that are held um, on this campus, but there were some requests to have uh, sessions that are faith or spiritually based in nature, um, using that as the foundation. Um, see, well, we were happy to, to put together a schedule, and we have the schedule that's posted actually through the remainder of this year, but the, the next session will be held on Thursday, August the 4th mm -hmm. at 1 o'clock uh, in, uh, in the chapel. So for, uh, for those um, people who feel a need for having some support, some spiritual support, um, and as well as the group support, that kind of dynamic mm -hmm. where people are able to come together and share, um, I think there's a lot of strength that you gain um, from having people come together um, to share their losses, to share their mm -hmm. grief process, and to be able to, um, to express you know, how they're feeling and give themselves permission uh, to feel the way that they sure. do. Uh, so this Thursday, uh, August the 4th at 1 o'clock in the chapel. You know, before 
Greenspring expanded a, a lot of the like um, grievance counseling and things like that. Um, I was part of a group who had lost a loved one, mm -hmm. uh, and it, they brought in an outside a social worker who mm -hmm. uh, focused on. And, and, and we had, there were about 11 of us in the group. Okay. And uh, we're down to about three or four now. But, okay. Um, it, we, after all the sessions, and it was a series. Sure, uh, like yes. That was like eight weeks or something. Mm -hmm. I, I can't remember exactly. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, we all said, oh, we don't like just, okay, this is the end. Right, So right. we began meeting once a month for lunch oh. to continue not just so much dealing with the grieving process, but that whole right. camaraderie kind mm -hmm. of thing. Mm -hmm. that, it means a lot. Yeah, I, it so. means a lot. And Jen, just, you know, even on a, I guess, a, a wider basis, you know, being in this community and knowing the um, the care that residents give to each other, mm -hmm. you know, if someone is not at the dinner table, you know, if there are other things that are going on mm -hmm. and they know that they would normally be there, mm -hmm. where, you know, you all reach out to each other right. and you are a, a, a tremendous support. Um, you yeah. know, I've seen so many people um, suffering with all kinds of, and certainly I've had my own, uh, but suffering with grief and loss, and um, having that support is is just it's critical, mm -hmm. it's essential, and it and it aids you know in our healing. It's so therapeutic mm -hmm. um, to be able to have someone you know, and like you're saying, even yeah. with that group, yeah. you're not necessarily always talking about that. No. You know, um, we in get fact, through we've the kind process. Kind of petered out in getting together every month. Uh -huh. I mean, it's all, but that's taken like twelve. Years. Right. I mean, right. this is like 12 years ago. This yes, all that. Yeah, yes. So. Um, uh, but certainly, is it's. But it's, that's very. It, the point I'm making, I guess, is mm -hmm. that it's very. It is an important um, step in the healing process. Yes. Is that camaraderie, mm -hmm. the sharing of things that you've all right. gone through, right. sort of thing. Right. That, that's wonderful. Um, okay. So that's that's Thursday. That's Thursday. So now we've covered Tuesday we've and Thursday. <laughs> Tuesday and Thursday. Um, and then just look between that, on Wednesday, uh, I just wanted to mention, we have our, um, the Interfaith Council, which meets once a month. And the Interfaith Council will meet on Wednesday at noon. Um, we come together again once a month. But if there are any issues or anything um, that residents would like for the Interfaith Council to address, um, because this is a body of all of the faith community leaders in Greenspring. Mm -hmm. um, so if they have things that they want to share, uh, bring to the Interfaith Council, or if there is a resident um, whose faith is not represented at Greenspring, and there are things um, that they would like to see us do, other mm -hmm. interests that they have, I encourage residents to reach out to us um, because we're always looking to you know meet as many of the needs as we possibly can mm -hmm. um, certainly there are so many religions so many you know people do spirituality they do faith they do religion all different mm -hmm. ways um, and we want to um, our attempt to, is to be as broad and as diverse as we possibly can so that all of the needs, or as many of the needs as we can mm -hmm. uh, serve, um, you know, that we can meet those needs. Mm -hmm. So if people have those things, we, we'd like to hear about them. We had uh, one resident who came um, uh, and met with us last week, just about an idea that she has that I, I think is wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, and so we said, okay, let's see how we can make this happen. Mm -hmm. um, so we will be doing so that. So the council meeting that meets one a month is mm -hmm. a closed meeting. It's a closed meeting. Of those leaders of the various faiths. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, and then um, another event that we have coming up um, is uh, on the 22nd and also on the 24th of August, uh, Rabbi Bruce Aft, um, whom, you know, a lot of us know in this community and mm -hmm. who uh, just comes with all of his wit and all of mm -hmm. his practical as well as, you know, spiritual and, and faith-based knowledge, um, he will be coming back to lead a session, uh, a two-part session on again on August uh, 22nd and 24th at 10 o'clock uh, in the Village Square Theater. So the topic is when bad things happen to good people. Yeah, okay. And um, the uh, Pastoral Ministries Dream Team actually met to talk about this. Uh, and we, of course, reached out to our Jewish um, faith community um, and have their support. So it's just a wonderful way to bring him back. Um, 
He did two other sessions for us earlier this year. Mm -hmm. uh, he did Personal Egypt, which was a really, really good one. And he did the Lord is My Shepherd um, that was very well attended on both of those. So we, we love having him come back mm -hmm. and share with us. And do, I, do people have to sign up They for don't have to sign up. They it's can first come, first serve. First come, the first serve. Theater. Absolutely. So please come and join us. And there's uh, only 242 seats. Only 242 seats. Or something seats. like that. It, I don't know if that's the exact number. But. But if we have 243 staff, we'll stand, so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, okay, so we have a couple more minutes. Yes, okay, so um, in response to um, all of the uh, the violence and, and things that we've seen, you know, in our country and in our world, um, the pastoral ministry staff had been talking uh, and, and brainstorming about what we can do um, as a team to um, bring uh, support. And then the challenge that we had is, well, which one do we respond to? Because they're, you know, there seem yeah. to be just countless um, numbers of violent acts. So beginning with the Orlando shooting, mm -hmm. um, and which we decided to to have something in the chapel for people to, to come and just have a time of I reflection. Went to that, yeah. Okay. It's very nice. Um, thank you. Um, so we are doing now uh, once a month. Um, a series that we're calling Praying for Our Nation. Mm -hmm. uh, once a month in the chapel, the next event, we had one event last Thursday. I apologize, it was, it was a little warm, um, but um, engineering um, uh, has worked diligently uh, to fix that problem. Uh, so we thank them for their support. Um, but praying for our nation on Thursday, August 25th at one o'clock uh, in the chapel will be the next session. Mm -hmm. um, and it's time, it's a time um, where people can come in. It's, um, we have quiet, kind of soothing, meditative music music playing, uh, people can come and go as they need to. Mm -hmm. uh, it is uh, reserved for an hour. Um, so it, it, people can come in, they can sit, they can pray and reflect. Um, they can go as they you know, so desire. And then there will also be staff there um, who, if someone uh, feels a need for a special prayer, individual mm -hmm. prayer, they want one of us to pray with them, uh, we will be there to do that and to support um, the residents and the staff who, um, who desire that. Um, we will offer not only prayer, but if someone wants, you know, an anointing, a prayer for healing, you know, mm -hmm. whatever the issues are, um, we will be available for that as well. But we want, wanted to open up the chapel once a month through the end of the year. Um, and okay. then we will be having, um, because some, some people expressed uh, a need for this, just to open the chapel up on election day um, so that people, you know, regardless of who they're voting for or if they're not voting at all, to come into the chapel um, at 10 o'clock. Uh, the chapel will be open for some special prayer and people can come and go as they please all day, um, beginning at 10, and the chapel will be reserved for that purpose. Well, let's hope next year you can open the chapel once a month in this sort of thing, in, in all the thanksgiving that we may. That would be wonderful. Wouldn't that, wouldn't that be a <laughs> that good thing? That would be wonderful. That Absolutely We're not only wonderful. getting together to grieve, yes. but we're getting together to thank. Yes, and you may have just given us another idea. Okay, there you go. <laughs> I don't charge. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much, Lois, for coming oh. today. Well, you know, we didn't mention, quickly, I think we have a second or two. Okay. To mention the upcoming newsletter. When yeah. will that come out? That will come out uh, on Friday of this week. Okay. Uh, as soon as the copy center can, can get them out to all the all right. the residents. But the end of the week, lots and lots of articles in here. And it's filled. Here. I mean, it there's is. hardly any white space on here. <laughs> it's lots there's so many words. It's a, there's a lot of words. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming. Oh, yeah.